the principle of mediocrity. It says that our location and our status are mediocre. They're unexceptional. As a result, we should not assume that we are in any way privileged or that the universe was designed with us or beings like us in mind. Edwin Hubble revealed that the Milky Way galaxy, encompassing more than 100 billion stars, including our sun, was a mere pinpoint of light in the universe. Unless there's something very, very special, miraculous, if you will, about our solar system, about our planet Earth, unless there's something extraordinarily unusual about it, then what happened here must have happened many times uh, in, in the history of, of the universe. Are habitable planets rare or common in the universe? There's two sides of the equation. There's the number of stars, the number of trials, if you will. But the other side is the factors. It takes a lot of factors to have a habitable planet and a planetary system. These factors, required for the Earth's habitability, became the focus of extensive research. The laws of physics and chemistry that pertain in a laboratory anywhere on Earth apply anywhere in the solar system, apply anywhere in the galaxy, and in many cases out to the most distant galaxies that we can see. There are indeed unchanging physical laws in the universe that apply to the entirety of the universe, that they're not localized to one place. The factors necessary for complex life on Earth are also the best parameters in the search for habitable planets elsewhere in the universe. Serious discussions about these factors begin with the same prerequisite, liquid water. The chemical properties of water are exquisitely suited for carbon-based life. These properties include water's ability to dissolve and transport the chemical nutrients vital to all living organisms, and its unmatched capacity to absorb heat from the sun, a process critical for regulating the Earth's surface temperature. In liquid form, water is an extraordinary substance and its existence hinges upon another factor essential to complex life, a planet's distance from its home star. It's like what they say in real estate, location, location, location. A habitable planet lives in what we call the Goldilocks zone. It's not too hot, it's not too cold, it's just right. And when I say just right, I mean just right for water. Liquid water really helps define the habitable zone. If it's too hot, again, the water just boils away. You just can't get condensed water. It's too cold, as in Mars today, it freezes out. Within our solar system, the habitable zone is relatively narrow, beginning well outside the orbit of Venus and ending short of the orbit of Mars. If the Earth were just 5% closer to the Sun, it would be subject to the same fate as Venus, a runaway greenhouse effect with temperatures rising to nearly 900 degrees Fahrenheit. Conversely, if the Earth were 20% farther from its home star, carbon dioxide clouds would form in its upper atmosphere, initiating the cycle of ice and cold that has sterilized Mars. The presence of liquid water is a necessary condition for life, but it's not a sufficient condition. After all, there may be liquid water under the frozen surfaces of Mars and Jupiter's moon Europa, but there's very little chance that complex life exists in either of these places. The recipe for life is much more complex than just add water. Deep within the Earth's interior, the movement of liquid iron generates a protective magnetic field essential to complex life. If our planet was smaller, its magnetic field would be weaker allowing the solar wind to strip away our atmosphere, slowly transforming the Earth into a dead, barren world much like Mars. As seen from space, the Earth's atmosphere glows as a thin blue ribbon of light. Measuring less than 1% of the planet's diameter, it is composed of a mixture of nitrogen, oxygen, and carbon dioxide. As a result, our atmosphere ensures a temperate climate, protection from the sun's radiation, and the correct combination of gases necessary for liquid water and complex life. For a size of planet like Earth, our moon is big. 
the current thinking is that if our moon didn't exist, neither would we. One fourth the size of the Earth, the moon's powerful gravitational pull stabilizes the angle of its axis at a nearly constant 23 and a half degrees. This ensures relatively temperate seasonal changes and the only climate in the solar system mild enough to sustain complex living organisms. If we find life out there, especially complex or even intelligent life, it will be around a star similar to our own. If the sun were less massive, like 90% of the stars in the galaxy, the habitable zone would be smaller. To remain within its boundaries, the Earth would have to be positioned closer to its star. Here, increased gravity would lock our planet's rotation into synchronization with its orbit. While one side of the Earth continually faced the sun and increased radiation from solar flares, the dark side of the planet would lay shrouded in perpetual cold and ice. It is unlikely complex life could tolerate these drastic extremes in temperature. A lot of things went right on Earth to have uh, yielded complex life, absolutely. The number of factors that have been postulated um, has grown. Currently, the typical number you would see is, in a typical list, would have something like 20. We find that we need to be at the right location in the galaxy, that we're inside the circumstellar habitable zone of a star, that we're in a planetary system with giant planets that can shield the inner planets from too many comet impacts, that we're orbiting the right kind of star that's not too cool or not too hot, that we're on a planet that has a moon that can stabilize the tilt of its axis, that we're on a planet that's a terrestrial planet, a planet that has a crust that's just thick enough that it can maintain plate tectonic activity, that has enough heat in its interior that it's still circulating its liquid iron core so it can generate a magnetic field, that it has an atmosphere that has enough oxygen to allow for complex organisms to survive, that it has enough water and enough continents to allow for the diversity of life or an active biosphere that you need to support complex creatures such as ourselves. All these factors have to be met at one place and time in the galaxy if you're going to have a planet as habitable as the Earth, which you need for complex and even technological life. In an attempt to estimate the probability of attaining this combination of factors simultaneously, some researchers have developed equations assigning a conservative 1 in 10 value to each factor deemed necessary for advanced life. If every element has to be there at the same time, you have to multiply the probabilities. And that's what makes the probability at the end so small. You've got 10% of this and 10% of that. And these things rapidly multiply to exceedingly small numbers. The numbers on the order of 10 to minus 15, which is 1 1,000th one of 1 1 trillion. And it's a number like that that you have to compare to the 100 billion stars that are in the galaxy. 100 billion is a very large number, but a thousandth of a trillionth is much, much smaller. On their face value, these probabilities are speaking. What they're telling us is this can't happen, or this is very unlikely to happen in the galaxy. And that's where the evidence is pushing us. There are many probabilistic resources in the galaxy, but on the other side of the coin are all these factors that you need. You have to get just right in order to have just one habitable planet like the Earth. And that leads me to conclude that yes, we're rare in the galaxy. The environmental conditions on the planet that would allow more complex creatures, similar to people, or plants and animals, is very rare. The Earth is actually a rather special place. While relatively simple microbial life may thrive on planets throughout the universe, planets capable of sustaining complex life are exceedingly uncommon. Well, the entire universe is highly hostile to life. If you compare all the known places in, in the universe, none of them compare to Earth. We live in a very special environment that provides what we need, provides air, provides food, stable conditions, so that the Earth is almost like a giant organism where its systems are interacting in a way that allows animals to survive. We did win the, the cosmic lottery, so we're a lucky planet. We're just in a very fortunate place. If the Earth does exist for a purpose, is there any way that we could tell? 
The sun is 400 times bigger than the moon, but it's 400 times further away. So there's this coincidence people have noted for centuries, but they just say, oh, well, it's a coincidence and shrug their shoulders. Perfect solar eclipses were sort of the tip of the iceberg, the first instance of an entire class of evidence that provides a way uh, for judging if the universe is the result of a fluke or some impersonal process or the result of purpose or design.